So I have some words of response, um, but your words certainly can stand on their own, both of you. I'll start with you, Alice. I love what you did with this Parsha. You brought in my friend, Rabbi Mike Rothbaum, who does lead a congregation also called Congregation Beth Elohim. The idea that a sick person is not described as a sick person, they're described as an Adam, a human, a human. And that Sifra, that said the priest sees the person, it says twice, meaning that the person is seen as a human being, not just as a sick person. When someone is sick, as you taught us, there's just an easy possibility of reducing that person to their illness, to their condition, of failing to see them in their full humanity. This can happen as people age. It can happen as people are disabled. It can happen whenever a person is somehow stigmatized in a society and seen as other. People can stop listening to them. People can stop seeing them. And when there's mass illness like COVID, people can just become numbers. And we can forget the individuality, the full life that's there in that person. And they can become an undifferentiated mass. And that is a violation of their inherent dignity. And Leo, then you applied this to the idea of women's equality. The beginning of the Parsha, we, as you said, we have an entirely different subject. And you made the case that when considering women after childbirth, the Torah does not treat them with the dignity, freedom that they deserve, that we deserve. That their impurity, which doubled if they give birth to a girl, and the resulting isolation was about stigma. It was demeaning. It was isolating. And when you compound it with the patriarchal history of our own people and all societies on earth, it reinforces the objectification and constriction of women's lives, something we're continuing to battle today. So Alice and Leo, though you took on different topics, your ideas align. You both are concerned about a core principle of Judaism, the inherent, inalienable, and infinite dignity of every human being. Whether that person is sick or well, young or old, with or without disability, male or female or any gender, this is a core concept for us. And even though the Torah and our rabbis, then and now, often fall short of that standard, it is our standard. Genesis 1.27 tells us that every human being is created in the image of God, no exceptions. Mishnah Sanhedrin 4.5 tells us that God created human being, humanity, out of a single ancestor, Adam. Same word. So that no one would ever say, my ancestors, my ancestors were better than yours. That's what they say, the rabbis say. The reason we're created from a single ancestor, known as Adam, but Adam, is so that no one could ever say, my ancestors are better than yours. So that human beings would never rank themselves into false hierarchies. That text goes on to say that it is our diversity that is evidence of God's creative genius. And our diversity is what gives us infinite worth in our lives because there is no one else like us. There never has been and there never will be. Now, if you think about it, this concept is at the root of so many of the issues that we face in our world today. Whether it's women's sovereignty over our own bodies and the value of our lives, and the complex choice of terminating a life yet to be, or whether it's Black Lives Matter, which is simply an assertion of what should be obvious, or whether it's a murderous war of choice that is taking lives and destroying lives in Ukraine, or whether it's immigrant and refugee policy and whether we can see the foreigner or the stranger as equally deserving, or whether it's the dignity and respect owed to a Supreme Court nominee who is a black woman, or whether it's the right to vote and the entire philosophy behind democracy, which is that every single citizen should have an equal say, or whether it's our response to climate change and whether we count the generations not yet born as equally deserving of life and health and safety and dignity, not to mention all other forms of life. I've been teaching our 10th graders about Jewish ideas about God. And in that process, I've introduced them to the ideas of Martin Buber. Martin Buber was born in Austria, but lived in Germany in the early 20th century, leaving there in 1938, just in time, to move to Palestine, Israel. 
He was nominated, I don't know if you know this, even if you're familiar with Buber, he was nominated 10 times for the Nobel Prize in Literature and seven times for the Nobel Peace Prize. He dedicated himself to Jewish education and most famously wrote a book called I and Thou. In it, he tells us that we move through the world in two different kinds of mindsets. In one mindset, we relate to other people as an it. And when we do that, our I is affected. The way I see myself is affected by how I see you. And if I see other people as an it, I am reduced. I become only a fraction of my being. The second mindset is to relate to another person as a thou, meaning fully seeing and beholding that other person. And when I do that, the world of relation is established, he says. And the way I see myself is then shaped by that relation. I become more whole. I use my whole being in that relation, he says, when I behold another human being as a thou. These experiences of seeing another as a thou don't last long, he says. They're just brief glimpses, brief moments when, of relating to another person as a whole being with one whole being, one's whole being. It doesn't last that long, but it enables us to then move through other moments of our lives poised to see the full dignity and personhood of others. I will not be here next Shabbat because I have the great privilege of taking our ninth and 10th grade classes on a trip to the south. There we will visit the Edmund Pettus Bridge where John Lewis was beaten almost to death marching for the right to vote. We will visit the Equal Justice Initiative's lynching memorial and learn about the brutal history of lynching in this country. We'll go to the Rosa Parks Museum and learn about the Montgomery bus boycott. We'll go to the 16th Street Baptist Church where a bomb set by racists killed four little girls. We go each year on this trip because we want to see firsthand the places where the 20th century struggle for civil rights was fought, to learn about the role of Jews in that struggle, and to consider our own role today in standing for human rights and dignity and equality. What Martin Buber would say about that effort, what parts of the Torah would say about that effort, the effort to create conditions by which every person can be seen and live in their full humanity, is that it makes us more whole. In two weeks, we will all sit around our Seder tables telling the story of our journey from slavery to freedom, our essential story that shapes our whole identity as a people, our whole purpose. We're each to see ourselves, the Haggadah tells us, as if we personally went free, so that we will bring that, that freedom that aspiration based on inalienable human dignity to all who live on earth. Thank you for teaching us this, Alice and Leo. May we rise to your call. Shabbat shalom.